Good evening, and uh, welcome to the first committee meeting of the Budget and Finance Committee for the year 2014. Since we did the, uh, the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag before, uh, I'm going to skip that. And we're going to go ahead, and the first order of business is to elect the chairman and vice chair of the Budget and Finance Committee. Uh, I would like to entertain motion of, um, sorry, I would like to entertain nominations for the chair. I would like to nominate Kendris Vasquez for a chair. Second. Uh, any other nominations? No. If there is none, uh, motion to close nomination. Motion made. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. President Maldonado and members of this committee, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to serve as your chair for this um, term. I would like to now open nominations for the vice presidency of the subcommittee for budget and finance. I can nominate uh, Councillor Aquino. Um, I'm afraid that you're going to have to second the motion because I'm not a, an official member. I'm an ex officio. So, so I'll, I'll second. She can nominate. She can accept. She can nominate as well. Second. Oh, yeah. yeah. You can, can second, second it. Yeah, you can second, second yourself. That's right. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Madam Vice Chair, thank you for accepting. Thank you for nominating me. All right. So it seems like we have a couple of people here in the room. There's um, quite a few items that we're going to be discussing today in our first meeting. Um, but there's um, what we're going to do just to be able to get some people uh, out in a faster way. We're going to uh, take some items out of order. Uh, we will definitely start with the two items, item 319-13, uh, which is appropriation transfer from free cash to litigations. Um, $350,000, and it, it was placed on the agenda by um, City Attorney Charles Potty. Mr. Potty? Good evening, Mr. Chairman and Councilors. Uh, Charles Potty, City Attorney. Um, we have a budget which has been depleted with respect to litigation and settlements and judgments. Uh, the two items that first appear on this evening's agenda uh, for appropriation transfers from free cash into those particular line items within the department that I serve. Uh, we have considerable obligations with respect to settlements that we've reached with uh, other, with the plaintiffs in cases uh, over the past several months. <clears throat> those call for periodic payments which will be paid out over the course of this fiscal year as well as uh, next fiscal year and in one case several years into the future. Uh, in particular, we have an agreement to pay um, $64,934.21 to the attorneys who represent the Lawrence, Lawrence Police Patrolman's Union. Uh, that is as a result of a settlement that we reached with them in an amount of approximately $264,000. Uh, that represents uh, fees, attorney's fees, that their membership incurred in defending uh, their members against claims of violations of civil rights and use of excessive force. Uh, we have, for almost uh, all purposes relevant to this, resolved those cases, and I think I uh, met with most of you and discussed this back on the evening of December 21st. Council President Maldonado wasn't serving at the time. But in any event, um, that was a, 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 a constellation of cases, approximately 12 to 20 cases uh, for which these uh, particular officers were represented. We have been in litigation since December of 2010 in three different fora with respect to this. Long story short, which is something that I say often and don't often follow through with. Uh, long story short, we have to make payment on this. Uh, we've made one payment on January 2nd. We have another one that is due June 4th. That will be the last payment for this fiscal year. 
We have also settled an outs a longstanding case uh, with a, uh, an employee who was laid off, and that calls for a payment this uh, spring sometime of approximately $20,000. I cannot make these payments unless there is uh, approval of the appropriation transfers that are requested by this department, excuse me, by this uh, council and in, through the subcommittee. I need to have that money um, not only to pay this, but to pay outside legal bills. What we've done, as you, many of you who were present on December 21st recall, is that we uh, postponed this, sent it out to subcommittee, although I had asked that it be heard on an emergency basis. And what I then did was I took money that was allocated to pay outside counsel, and I used that money to pay the initial $64,000 payment that was due January 2nd. So now as a result of that, I have additional outstanding bills for outside counsel. And in addition, we had already depleted the funds as we knew we would, as our department knew we would um, back when this budget was originally formulated. We understood at that time that uh, at such time when the budget amounts were depleted, that we'd have a chance to reassess this and potentially do a supplemental appropriation, which is what we're asking for now. So this is not unanticipated. Um, and the amounts, the cases uh, that we've settled are ones that should have been settled and the amounts are fair and in some cases represent a savings over our total liability. Councilor LaPlante. Sure, so one of the things that, that I, when Councilor Rivera was here and now he's of course the mayor, he had some concerns about that. Have you been able to run this by him at all and, and we're all, the administration is all on the same page with respect to paying these things? Um, I, d I have not specifically spoken ab about the topic with him. However, uh, one of the cases that, uh, that we need the money to pay is a case which we've settled uh, since January 3rd uh, during the, this current administration. And so therefore, uh, he assented to that settlement. Um, so by implication, he would, he's assenting to uh, doing some sort of an appropriation transfer in order to support that. And just as we look at the crystal ball, what else is outstanding? What do you see besides these? Are you or? We have regular payments due to an assistant city clerk. Um, they're, they're coming to an end, but we do have payments that are made uh, to an assistant city clerk for a claim from several years back. Uh, we have a claim that we pay on a quarterly or semi-annual base, semi basis for uh, violations of the Americans with Disabilities Act which we are being, we're, we're under a plan to become more compliant with, but part of that is paying the attorney who represented the plaintiffs in the case uh, to oversee and, and supervise our compliance and our moving towards goal in that. So we have those which are regular occurring uh, expenses that are a result of either court order or a settlement agreement. Um, and then we have some outstanding um, litigation for which we've employed outside counsel. The bulk of that is a result of me being a witness in the cases or a defendant in the cases. And I'm pleased to say that um, Susan in my office took a look at a couple of the bills that have just come in and they're much lower than what we've been seeing. So it looks like uh, we've settled down with a little of the litigation and as a result we can expect outs outside bills to decrease somewhat. I still think that uh, we're essentially requesting about $500,000 in transfers, and I think that we will probably use that, and probably not anything more than that this Which year. Which firm was that that you're using for outside counsel? Um, there are a couple firms that we use, but the, the right now, primarily, we're using Morgan, Brown, and Joy. We also have Foley Hoag, which is a firm that represents us on a couple of issues. And um, Attorney DiAdamo's office had represented us on a few things, and I think that most, if not all of those, are resolved except for workers' compensation cases. Uh, Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Um, do we have any pending litigation on any other uh, violation of civil rights? Uh, yes, we do. We have department? one case, which is uh, a case that alleges the violation of a woman by a police officer while he was alleged to be on duty. Um, that case is one that we are fighting. We are in the process of discovery. I think we have some opportunities to either get ourselves out of the case or to at least reduce the number of counts against us or the number of claims against us. Uh, but that is not a case that is going to go to trial this fiscal year. 
probably would go to trial next fiscal year, maybe about a year from now, uh, all things considered. And we do have some, some liability there, um, but I think we have uh, some, uh, we, I think we have a very good defense that we can uh, put forth. May I ask, if possible, uh, that you provide this committee uh, a list of pending litigations uh, with a brief description of what the circumstances are so that both this committee and the uh, full city council become familiar with what we have ahead uh, <coughs> in terms of liability and um, hopefully become more informed. I'm happy to provide you with a list and I think it's wise for you to be as informed about these cases as you can. Okay. Um, however, uh, I think we need to put some parameters on what you're looking for because just for example, we have receivership cases. Mm -hmm. We have more than 50 of them now. Um, we have tax title foreclosure cases. I don't know how many, we have about 40 of those. I don't think that's what you're looking for. I think you're primarily looking for um, civil rights cases, use of abusive force cases, and perhaps um, slips, falls, defects in public yeah. ways, school yeah. liability cases, yeah. discrimination, stuff like that. Yes. yes. Okay, yes. I'll get you that. Definitely. Any other questions, counselors? The only question I've got, one last question. What's the time sensitivity behind this? When do we need to move on? You're exhausted already. I know there were some time frames. I forgot what they were. We've managed to survive through January. We've, we've, we've hit what we really needed to hit. I think the next payment is due end of March or early, or early April, so it's not, uh, it's not immediate at this point. But clearly, um, just as an example, I have $500 in expenses that haven't been paid because we don't have funds to do that. So, you know, sooner the, sooner the better as far as I'm concerned, but it uh, doesn't have to be this month or next month, I should say. For clarification purposes, um, Mr. Attorney, I, I first understood that there were two payments. One was January 2nd and another, another one June 20, I mean June 4th. Yes. Um, so then there's another payment that is happening also in. There's a payment, there's another payment that's, that's going to come due June 4th. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, so there's one prior to that in, in yeah. March or. I'm sorry. April 1st is April the second 1st. payment. Okay. And July 1st is the third. April 1st mm -hmm. and July 1st. Yep. Sometime in April, we'll have to pay out uh, approximately $100,000. Okay. Be $20,000 to the employee and 64000 to this individual and then some incidental payments. So this, by April, we're going to need that money. And what is the, the amount for July 1st? The same amount. The same amount. It's a, yes, it's a broken down into four equal payments of 64,000, uh, 93421, roughly 65,000. Councilors, any other questions? I'd like to make a motion that we send up to the full council a favorable recommendation, document number 319.13 and 320.13. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank, Thank you, you. councilors. Thank you. Um, Document 315-13, New Police Department Accounts, Auxiliary Police, and Animal Control. It was placed on the agenda by um, Chief Fitzpatrick. Can I please get a motion to send correspondence to the Chief with regards to this item uh, to be a, a so moved. second. Second. To be present in the next meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 He was actually the Neighborhood Chief. Association meeting. I just left him. Ago. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you want a yep. motion to table? Uh, table? Motion to table. Motion to table. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. The ayes have it. Um, Councillors, I'm going to take three documents uh, as a block because they appear to be the same, uh, pretty much the same, which is um, document 414, document 1314, and document 2414. Um, I had an opportunity to speak with. Um, Director Anello with, uh, with, with regards to these three documents and we'll just do it all together. If that's okay with you, can I please have a motion to take it as a block? So motion to take it as a block. Second. Mention that again. Uh, documents 414, first quarter budget reports. Document 
2013-14 fiscal year 2014 budget year to date review on document uh, 2414 city financial quarterly report for the period ending on December 21st, 2013. Uh, there's a motion on the floor. And it, it's been second. All in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Mr. Arnello. Thank you, counselors. Um, the uh, uh, the reason why we're taking these as a block is the f the uh, the first quarter budget reports um, were, I think, uh, initially uh, brought down to the council. But in the meantime, we we're able to run the second quarter budget reports, which have the first and second included. Uh, so that's what I'd I'd like to uh, um, bring to your attention tonight. You should have in your packet. Um, Six documents. Six documents, and there's a uh, they look eight and a half by eleven sheets of, of paper with uh, with data, and what they are is the revenues and expenses for each of our budgeted uh, funds. May I interrupt. Is that dated one ten two thousand fourteen? Say, say that again. Is Tom? it dated one ten two thousand fourteen? Uh, okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. So. The, uh, you know, the, the, uh, I'll entertain any questions you have about it, but I'd like to explain what we have before you. Uh, for the general fund, we have a, a report entitled General Fund Revenues Dash Budget Actual. And what this report has is uh, the original, the budget, and then the actual revenues year to date from July 1 to December 31st for each of these revenue categories. They're subtotaled by major, uh, major categories such as uh, uh, the very top of your, the, the first page, page one, you should have taxes and excise, and there's a bunch of uh, uh, numbers for each of the, uh, each of the uh, revenue categories we, we record under the caption taxes and excise. Um, and that's a, a five page document, and that's just general fund only. So if I could just bring your attention to the, the fifth and final page uh, in the Revised estimated re revenue uh, line item. We see $254,984,627.72. Those are estimated revenues for fiscal year 14. And then the column next to it, you'll see the actual revenues received to date. And then in the last column to the right, you'll see the remaining revenues uh, to, to collect uh, before the end of the year. So we are roughly at 40, uh, at 50 percent of the of the budget year. We have collected 48.4 uh, percent in total of all our revenue categories. So we're we're on target to collect our revenues. There's quite a few revenues you'll notice, uh, uh, and I don't know which page it's on, but there's quite a few revenues that uh, we get by quarter or we get at the end of the year. Uh, they don't come. All, they often don't come. Not all of our revenues come rateably month to month. Um, but uh, uh, I'm pleased to report that we're, we're on track to collect our revenues as we've estimated. So that's the first report I just wanted to bring to your attention. The second report in your packet should be the general fund expenditures dash budget to actual. And this is each of the departmental budgets uh, for FY14 and showing where they, where they reside and it's, and it's, and it's rolled up to a, a high level, so it's it's reviewable by um, uh, by counselors uh, for each each department that was approved in the uh, uh, by the city council in the FY14 uh, uh, budget vote. So on page, uh, I think this is a seven-page document, uh, and on the first page you see the city council, then the mayor, then the budget and finance division, then the city uh, attorney, and so on. Each of those. Um, uh, each of those departmental budgets are broken down into the categories that you'll see, and I'll use the city council as an example. Uh, category uh, 51 is personal services, then purchase of services, which is uh, supplies and, uh, and, and such, professional services, uh, then uh, 30, uh, 54 supplies, I'm sorry, and then 57 is other charges and expense. So in general, uh, everybody has a personal service, which is salary line item, and uh, and so on. So that is the general uh, nomenclature that we, we uh, roll up departmental budgets to. So it's easy, it's fairly easy to review at, the, at a high level. 
Um, of course, beneath this, these reports are very detailed reports. If the council would like them, I can certainly print them, but they'll, they'll kill a few trees. Uh, they're quite a few, be hundreds of pages, but, but anyway, uh, that, that certainly is available. But using the city council as an example for um, illustrative purposes, uh, you know, the, the salary budget for the city council is 204901 They've expended 93697 year to date. And the available budget is 111,000, and they're at 45.7% uh, uh, available. So uh, they are, um, uh, they have not, uh, they're right on target. Uh, they're actually a little bit ahead of, ahead of target, meaning they've, uh, uh, they're projecting a little bit of a surplus in that line item. And, and that's how all of the line items can be read. Uh, the, the wrinkle in some of these, when, when you see the second line item, and again, for illustrative purposes, I'll use the city council, the purchase of service category, which has 72,700 budgeted, we've already expended 48,000 and there's 21,000 encumbered. Uh, the available balance subtracts both of those amounts, the actual expended and, and the encumbrances to say the available. So it looks like you've expended 96.7% of your budget uh, with only 50% of the year gone, but it is, uh, you have 21,500 encumbrances, and I believe that line item in general contains the city's audit, which uh, is paid uh, closer earlier in the year and not rateably throughout the year. And so that's uh, just for illustrative purposes, I just want to explain how, how to read that report, uh, and, and it's the same for every department. The next uh, report that you should have is for the Park and Garage Enterprise Fund, and that also is a, is a document, a, a budget document, and there is a uh, Park and Garage Enterprise Fund Revenues Budget to Actual page, and then there is a Park and Garage Enterprise Fund Expenditures Budget to Actual page. And again, those are the expenses of operating the garages and, and lots, basically, and, uh, and the revenues associated therewith. The last two, um, uh, there's, there's four more reports, I'm sorry, there's one more uh, enterprise fund, which is the airport enterprise fund. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and again, there's gonna be a, the first page would be the revenues uh, for the airport budget to actual, and then the next report is the expenditures budget to actual for the airport enterprise fund. Mr. Arnold, I'm sorry. Yep, sure. Um, when we go back to the parking garage enterprise fund, yep. uh, the expenditure, EFC, it, it seems like we had, we were supposed to get three pages for that, but we only have two, um, page one and three. Is that correct or is it, a, is it just a typo? Um, there should should be a third page, although all it is is the totals. Okay. So it's a set that, um, did you not get page three? Is that what you? Page no, two. We're missing page two. Oh, you're missing page two. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't have it. I don't have there should be, a, I have a page two. It should be, there, are you all missing page two? It says dental on it for page two. That's what I have. Yes. No, it's, um, what? There should be, uh, there, there's a page one of the, the revenue budget actual is just one page. The ex, Park and Garage Enterprise Fund Expenditures Budget Actual, there are three pages, and if you're missing a page. Yeah, we're, I'm missing one. You're missing so, page two. Yeah, page I'm missing two. all three. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I, I can. Yeah, you could just send it to us via email. I can, you know, I have it all in an email and a PDF, and I think I provided to the yeah. uh, clerk in a PDF, so he might have just when it printed out, maybe missed a page. Yeah, no, I think that's, that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Councilor. So the, the uh, next report, again, the, the airport enterprise, the one I just did, um, those are all, again, adopted budgets by the city council. The last enterprise fund that we have uh, is the water sewer enterprise fund. And, uh, and again, there's a two page report of the water sewer enterprise fund revenues budget to actual. And then there's a um, seven or eight, seven page water sewer enterprise fund expenditures budget to actual. So those are the, re the, the adopted budgets that the city council approved uh, back in June. And so I, I run a revenue and expense um, a report uh, rolled up to a high level uh, uh, for councilors to review. And since this is the, 
uh, first opportunity to review it. Uh, you know, I, I just want to explain what the reports are. I'll certainly take your questions if you want to take them tonight or if you'd like to review them and get back to me with some questions or whether you would like further breakdown of certain pages. Uh, again, with our accounting system, we can break this down as, as detailed as you, as you like. Um, I just have a comment with regards to the formatting. Mm -hmm. um, Particularly in the water and sewer enterprise front in the revenue. Yep. Probably I, I understand why it's like this. But, uh, in the remaining revenue, I see a lot of negative numbers, but negative doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing here, or is it? Well, what that all, uh, in other words, on page one of the revenue budget to actual page? Correct. Yes. Uh, the, if you look, the, the, uh, uh, if you look at the revenues, uh, the budgeted revenues, the middle column revised estimated revenues, you'll see that there's no budget for, for so water charges from, from 2006. That's the first line. So that and is we collected $26.18. So it's, we over collected, so it's a negative. Yeah. So, so having a negative number here means that we already collected that. Uh, in, in this particular case, there's a negative uh, revenue uh, on this very first line, I'm a negative 26.18. Uh, that must have been uh, a refund or an adjustment to that line item. A positive number means that's the revenue collected. A negative number means that was like a negative revenue, which is we paid it back. No, but I'm, I'm referring to the column that says remaining revenue. The remaining revenue, yep. So all of those negative numbers are good. That's correct. Those are good right. numbers. Okay. Just to verify. Uh, Councillor Lapin. So <clears throat> on a really quick brief, looking over this real briefly, on the personnel services, it looks as though the bogey should be 46.6, or at least 46% across the board. That's where we should be at at this point. Would that be accurate? Uh, well, it's roughly 50%, but uh, I have to um, tell you exactly how we have 26 payrolls, so uh, I can't, re I usually note it, I didn't note it on my copy. Was there 12, or we had, uh, was 12 payrolls posted or, or 13? The only reason why I say that is, I mean, the city council is a very easy one to understand. We are nine yep. of us. We get paid the same amount as the council president. It's very, and no one's being laid off, and there's no mm -hmm. overtime, and it's mm -hmm. very straightforward. Right. Right. And so that number right there is 45.7. So if I use that as, as, as uh, kind of the benchmark, knowing that we're going through this at the steady pace, then it would make sense to me that, for the most part, if we're at 45.7 for all the other departments from the personal services, 45, and they were pretty much on target. If, however, we're at a different number, mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm looking at police and fire and DPW, because at that point you're talking about, I believe, overtime costs are under right. that personal, on that right. major sub-object. So, um, but so even I just want to make sure I'm on the right. Even in the counselor's budget, uh, there are a few line items like uh, longevity yeah. And a few, other, you know, not all the councils get that, but your council staff gets a longevity item, line item. Those are that that was paid out, I believe, in uh, either November one or December one. So that would skew the numbers. Uh, and there are some other line items that may not have uh, smaller ones that may not have been paid until later in the year. But right. in in general, uh, each budget should be about fifty percent this time of year. Right. And so I guess the one thing that I was hearing about was in the police department about the overtime costs. We had a lot of overtime. How are they doing now? How are they tracking? Uh, we meet with the, uh, you know, th there, as you can see in this, um, in this report for the police department, if you look at the, uh, the top line, personal, personal services in total for the police department, uh, the budget's 10.9 million, they've expended 5.6 million, they have 5.3 million left, so they're at 51.4, they're a little bit uh, above the 50% mark. But we, uh, the overseer and I and the mayor have been meeting with the police, fire chief, and DPW uh, director monthly uh, to review for this particular, uh, for police and fire in particular, the overtime. Uh, DPW, because of the snow and ice, and, and again, those are the largest departments because we know this is a, a challenging year uh, for departments and we want to uh, stay on top of it. So tomorrow we have our monthly meeting with the fire department. So I just thank you for that. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the opportunity to talk with you offline. I'm, I am interested in, in the parking, and I'm most specifically interested in what's going on in Museum Square. Uh, that's a new area that's now part of my district, so i got a, a keen interest in what's going on there with the finances 
and the, the, the need for some repairs and things going on over there. So we'll, I will talk to you mm -hmm. at a later point, not tonight, about issues at that location. Thank you. Councillors, any additional questions? Councillors, we have your pledge. Do you want, Mr. President, would you like this to go up to the full council? Yes, I think I think so. Uh, I think that the full council should be involved in learning about this, and if they have any additional questions, uh, we can, that Mr. Anello can ask, can answer those questions at that point. Sure. Motion made to send those documents that are in block to the full council with favorable recommendation. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 You guys have it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so we'll take um, document uh, document 1814, the City Fiscal Year 2013 Financial Audit and Review, including the following three components. We're going to take a we're going to just one. I just want to send that up to the full council. No, not this one. I think this one already. 914? Okay. Okay, so I'm sorry, we're gonna take document 914, acceptance of a private grant, racial and ethnic approaches of com to community health, REACH grant for $40,000. It was submitted by James Barnes, Community Development Director. Thank you. Good evening, Council. It is Sue Fink, Community Development Department, 6 Rockwood Lane. I'm here this evening to request the City Council's authorization to expend grant funds on a racial and ethnic approaches to community health, or REACH, grant. This grant is from the Center for Disease Control, which was awarded to the YMCA. The city has entered into an MOU with the YMCA, and under this MOU, the YMCA will provide $40,000 in support of the Mayor's Health Task Force, and in turn, the Mayor's Health Task Force will assist in the facilitation of the initiatives of this grant. The REACH grant was granted to look at creating opportunities for more physical activities and healthier food options within the city. Since obesity was identified as one of the city's chronic health problems by the Healthy Active Living Working Group, the YMCA applied for funding to help in carrying out the tasks of the working group. The Mayor's Health Task Force, specifically Vilma Laura, has been assigned as the community coach for this grant. As part of the effort, the Health Task Force is looking at publicizing open spaces for recreation, spaces where physical activity is taking place, promoting the farmer's market during the summer months, as well as urban and community gardens, promoting the Spicket River Greenway and hiking in Denrock Park. They're also looking at the corner stores and starting with a small cohort of five stores will review how healthy foods are being displayed. They're working with the owners, the Latino Chamber of Commerce and Groundwork Lawrence to see how best we can support the corner stores needs. And finally, they will promote our salsa brand, which is supporting active Lifestyles for All, which will encompass the healthy active living resolution that was already adapted by the city last August. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Councillors, any questions? Councillor LaPlante. Out of the $40,000, how much of that is going to administrative cost? Um, those funds will be supporting a contract that the city has with the YWCA to provide the services of Vilma Laura to the Mayor's Health Task Force. When you have a chance, can you give me the number at a later time? How much of that out of the 40000 is going for administrative cost? Certainly. Okay. And there is an administrative component to that, right? Are you aware of that? Do you know if that's true? I'm, I'm presuming that there is. You know, it's strictly um, funds to support the overall general Mass Health Task Force. There's not a specific line on this for personnel in no, but I, my understanding now, I'm kind of new with this, so bear with me. So my understanding is that whenever there's these grants, that there is a percentage of it that goes for administrative costs that allows the, whether it's the Mayor Health Task Force or the YMCA, to go ahead and, and to have their staff go ahead and do it. So there's a percentage of that that goes toward them to operate this. And I'm just curious, and, and maybe I'm wrong about that, but that's um, my presumption. This is sort of a different situation. It's not a grant that the city was awarded, and most grants do come with administrative costs. This is just a pot of money that the YMCA is giving to us to help support the Mayor's Health Task Force. We can use it however we see fit to support the Health Task Force. Okay. So none of this is going to pay salaries. None of this is going for any of that. It's all going for 
This will strictly the food be and the program. No, no. This, this will cover the contract part of the contract with the YWCA for the coordinator. Laura. Okay. So it's actually paying. It's actually paying for the administrator, the staff, for to to do these things. The coordinator, yes. The coordinator. Mm -hmm. So it's actually that I would presume that's an administrative cost. That's not. You're not buying stuff. You're not buying. Correct. We're not purchasing anything with. Purchasing that anything. You're just paying for salary. Paying for a contract. Okay. Correct. And that. And that entire is going to pay for that individual salary yes. for that. Mm -hmm. Is this the primary and this is the mayor health task force individual and that person help me understand this falls under this under the city. How, how does that how does that work? The coordinator is under a contract with the city through the community development department. She's an employee of the YWCA. We have contracted with the YWCA to provide a certain portion of her time to oversee the activities with the Mass Health Task Force. She works about 20 to 25 hours a week on Mass Health Task Force items. So that's almost, that's how many hours a week? 20? Between 20 and 25. So it's like a part time, almost half time to work for the city. Mm -hmm. Correct. And, when you do, and this has been going on for how many years now? This is a new this is a new grant. This is a new award. This is a new award. Yes, we just received the the first check um, in uh, November, I believe. So there is no. We can't look at the precedent. We can't see how this is happening. That's this is brand new. This is brand new. Okay. Correct. And and what my last question is: What kind of milestones are you keeping? You may say you, the C department, to to make sure that whatever work is being done for these monies are being exceeded. What's the what are those milestones? Do you have a list of milestones that need to be reached? Um, they're required to provide um, monthly reports on the activities of each of the working groups that she oversees, um, and I do get those reports with their invoices every month. Okay, I'm just, and I'm sorry about these kinds of naive okay. questions, but this is my, again, my <coughs> first time going through some of these. I just want to get a better sense as to what that is. So next, this time next year, if we apply for it again, I could ask you this question. How did they do last year? What did they meet the milestones, whatever those are to this grant? And I, those are the kinds of questions I'll be asking next year. Mm -hmm. So as long as I know that you're keeping score and watching what's happening, those questions will be asked next year. We'll have an answer, right? Okay, thank you. You're Any additional questions? Um, I've had the opportunity to, to attend many of the meetings uh, that the Mayor Tales Task Force has. And actually, just to give a, a, a brief overview of what it is, it's a, it's a collaborative effort among nonprofit organizations around the city. Um, there's monthly meetings that happen, and there, um, there's also some subcommittees within it that will target specific health areas in the city, whether it is uh, teenage pregnancy, diabetes prevention, um, obesity, uh, and mental health, and you name it. And from my understanding, uh, and from what I gather, in that last, in, in one of the meetings I attended, this is particularly for the salsa program. Correct. Um, uh, we do have some, a, a sheet of paper here that says that the $40,000 will go to professional services, and that might be the reason why Councilor LaPlante was asking. And, and to me, that's also, um, you know, a big number, $40,000 just for professional services. Um, and I have to concur with him. Uh, you know, I would like to see where the $40,000 will be spent. Is it just going to be on, on salary, or will it be more on, on the actual implementation of the program? Um, it's strictly covering a portion of the contract with the YWCA. Okay. So, but, but the contract with the YWCA, does it mean the salary or the program? For oh, it's strictly the, salsa the salary of okay. Ms. Laura. Okay. I know, uh, and then for the benchmarks and, and what we want to see within a year, I know you touch upon the, the subcommittees that there, there are, but I'm, I don't want to put words in, in his mouth, but I guess he was referring to this particular program, which is the SALSA program, rather than the Mayor's Health Task Force as, a, as an organization. Okay, I, uh, I will have to say I don't have that with me this evening, but I can certainly get that to you. All right. I appreciate. Is that what you were referring to, Councilor? A, a little bit. I just, I just want to see what the metrics are on it. And now that you're bringing it up, one other question is: is one sheet says twenty thousand, and then the other sheet for professional services says forty thousand. I'm not sure why that is. I believe because they, they, re they had. Um, We've already received. It's two payments of twenty thousand dollars. We're just getting. 
So one is, one was Thank already you. received. Right, and the next and one the, is due the in next September. Tumi, yeah. Okay, so that that's correct based on what I gather. Thank you. Um, I believe Councillor Toomey has a. Yeah, thank you. Um, if I understand this thing correctly, here um, there's going to be a, a coach of some of, of some fashion that's going to develop these things. Is that right? It says responsibility of the coach. Vilma Laura is the coach under this grant. And these are all her responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. Are there any further questions? Uh, well, I'm not done yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> so this is for the um, mayor's health task force, right? Is that correct? I'm, I'm looking for authorization to expend the funds that we've received from the YMCA under this particular grant. Are there people involved that these coaches are going to be working with? I would assume that the YMCA has um, set up some committees and Ms. Laura is being um, part of those committees. I know that Alicia Miller from our office attends uh, meetings over at the YMCA on the REACH grant as well. Do you understand what I'm trying to get at? In other words, this person is being paid as a coach, assist in identifying and recruiting a community leadership team made up of traditional and non-traditional community leaders that are committed to creating shared and authentic community visions focused on policy and environmental change. Now, what is all this going to be directed at? This is to um, promote um, healthy, active living in the city, identifying opportunities for improved physical activity and access to healthier foods. For somebody, for some person. For the, assume, the, right? the entire population of Lawrence. So they're just going to develop a, some sort of a plan that will be published and say this is the... This Correct, is they're the going to work with um, five um, bodegas to um, better display healthy food options. I'm not sure which five they have identified um, to do that with. Plus they're promoting um, the use of the parks and other physical um, activity opportunities such as the Greenway, hiking in Denmark Park. That's all fine, well, and good, but that's, that, that information has to get out to people somehow, is that mm -hmm. correct? Otherwise, correct. what? Oh, good. I'm sure as part of this program, they're gonna be working on um, contacting the media and getting the information out to people through various um, media outlets. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any additional questions? No? Thank you. Uh, Councilors, what's your pledge? Motion to send it up with a favorable recommendation. Is that second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, the ayes have it. Thank you, Councilors. Thank you. All right, we're going to take um, document 1814, uh, City's Fiscal Year 2013 Financial Audit for Review, including the following three components. Report on examination of basic financial statements. Report on federal award programs and management. And it was submitted by um, Mayor Dan Rivera. Uh, Councilors, um, what we're going to do is actually invite, uh, we received three documents from Powers and Sullivan. Uh, and we're going to send a letter to invite them for our next uh, subcommittee meeting to be able to provide us a, a, an overview of this particular document. So I, will, I was wondering if I could get a, a motion to table this. Motion to table. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And I'd, uh, also send a correspondence to Powers and Sullivan to invite them uh, for our next subcommittee meeting, which will be, we will have to decide whether it will be on a Wednesday or Tuesday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Counts, uh, now, document 1114, street paving, payments and conflicts. It was submitted by Councilor President Maldonado, and this was also um, reference to the ordinance uh, subcommittee meeting. I know that we have um, members of the administration here. And I would like to uh, first ask um, Mr. Isensi to just give us a brief overview of the street paving. And, and I know that also Mr. Walls, who's the city engineer, is here. Just something brief, just to, to let us know what had happened about the street paving, approximately how many streets were paved, um, 
you know, anything that you think will be <coughs> informative for us. Um, John Isensi, Acting DPW Director. Good evening, Council. Is uh, the paving of the past couple of years, or I, I shouldn't really call it paving. It's it's a reclamation of the the uh, hot top. Actually, it's uh, a more cost-effective manner to do road repair. There are several methods to make road repair. Uh, you can go to full depth reconstruction, uh, remove and reset the curb stones, uh, a base coat followed by a finish coat, raising all the structures along the way. Uh, that's basically the Cadillac of road work, if you will. Uh, the city of Lawrence has a vast array of streets in different states of repair. We have about 614 odd streets. A lot of them have cobble base under them. Some have been full depth reconstruction over the years. That method tends to cost an awful lot of money. Hence, we call it like a Cadillac rehab. Um, with the amount of streets we have, when we did full depth reconstruction, we found ourselves to fall way behind on road repair as a whole, as a city. Uh, if you do two or three streets a year, full depth reconstruction, you are gonna fall into street stress very, very quickly. You're gonna end up like we were a few years back where essentially every street had an issue. Uh, we looked for a, a couple different methods uh, when I came into the office of the director. And one of those methods that we looked at was hot in place recycling. Uh, it's not new to the industry. It has been around for a number of years. Uh, however, some methods tend to be a bit better than others. Um, and I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on how it works. Uh, we have a pretty good inside knowledge of how it works. However, hot top is not my primary focus. Uh, but we do know that the method that was selected recently uh, is kind of a, a, an upgrade from what other folks generally do uh, with reclamation work. Uh, this method tends to be like a, a couple hot plates driving down the road, heating up the hot top, making it soft and pliable. It's followed by a third truck that has a, another heat plate on it, and it, behind that it has a scarifying mechanism that essentially scratches up the hot top surface, uh, puts it into a corkscrew type of trough that mixes emulsion in and basically rejuvenates the hot top. Places it back down much like it would if it was being placed brand new out of the plant. Uh, it's rolled back down and the surface is ready for a drivability in a matter of hours. Um, it tends to work very well in our type of situation based upon the engineering that was done on our roads many, 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 many years ago. Uh, the sub bases tend to hold up very well when they were done and they are still holding up to this day. So essentially if you look at your own driveway, you have a, a base coat underneath here, they put a finish coat on it. After a few years, it tends to get a little beat up. Uh, usually you would not strip out that whole driveway and do it all over again. You would essentially go over it uh, and get more serviceable life out of that driveway for a reasonable cost. Uh, we look at road work pretty much the same. Um, there's really not a need to completely rebuild every street, curbing, and sidewalk. Simply, we can't afford it. We try to get as far as we can with the monies we have available. This method tended to be a quite a bit less expensive, hence we started to develop this methodology in our planning. Now, every street is not available to be done this way. There may not be enough coating, top coating, on top of the cobblestone. Can't lift it off there, heat it up, throw it back down and think it's gonna stick. It's just not gonna work that way. Some areas where it's notoriously wet, groundwater, for instance, will take Current Hill Road up by the cemetery. If you're leaving uh, the city of Lawrence heading up Methuen in that area, you'll notice the side of the road is always deteriorated over there. Uh, potholes after potholes have been repaired. Um, there's a drainage issue over there. The road is always wet. Uh, I'm going to say uh, Spring Street, Spring and Crest. If you're familiar with Prospect Hill, you come down Crest Street, leads into Spring, very, very wet in that area. The road continually deteriorates. We're always after that area. Another street that we had done, uh, let's say Harriman, Hamilton Street, off of East Haverhill Street, notoriously wet area. 
they tried this process late in the season. The weather was cold. Uh, looked nice originally when done. However, the moisture got the best of it and it's starting to pull up and delaminate from the base coat. Uh, this company, uh, Highway Rehab, has intimated to us that they would stand behind their work for a year. Um, and we have no reason not to believe they won't. Um, contracts were issued the past couple of years um, to these companies for this work. It was bid and properly procured. Uh, work proceeded uh, in accordance with what the administration deemed they wanted done. Generally speaking, road work and the planning and implementation of road work is done through the DPW office. There was a bit more involvement with the administration the past couple years than has normally been a custom. Um, some of the exuberance may have led to more square yardage being produced than was budgeted and contracted for. When they reached the contract number that we have encumbered the money for, we cannot go any further than that. We cannot, by law, pay any further. You can conjecture, you can plot and plan to manipulate the procurement system in the city of Lawrence or for the state, but the procurement laws in the state of Massachusetts are not based on the ability to manipulate and connive and maneuver. They're based on law, and you cannot circumvent those laws. Procurement law is very strict in Massachusetts. It's very complex. Uh, when we <clears throat> issue a contract, the money's encumbered. There is no mechanism to go beyond that in the construction phase of bidding and procurement. Any questions? Any questions? Uh, John, um, who has the ultimate responsibility for the supervision of the the work that was done? The ultimate authority, and, it's, and it would fall upon me if the engineer who was working the project works for me, it would ultimately fall on me. And, okay, uh, but you have somebody under you that was supervising? We do. And We've overseeing had, the uh, construction? We do. Okay. We have a city engineer who's handled chapter 90 work for the city for 17 years. Okay. Um, were you familiar at all with the initial scope of the, of the work in the uh, initial contract? We were. Well, my part of it is, is um, we look at the method in, in which we want to use, whether we're going to overlay, whether we're going to full depth reconstruction, mm -hmm. whether we're going to use a hot in place, whether we're going to use crack sealing. I would okay the methods that we plan on using for that season. Do you remember the, uh, the amount of square feet that was estimated to or stipulated in the, uh, in the original contract? It, it's, it's actually measured in square yards. And, it was uh, in square yards, not square it's feet? It's measured in square yards. Okay. Um, no, I'm not familiar with the exact amount. I don't have the contracts in front of me. We base our uh, contracts on the amount of money that is available through Chapter 90 how many square yards they do or what kind of work is done, whether it's sidewalk work, uh, whether it's curb work, uh, whether it's hot in place, crack ceiling, those are determined by the amounts and quantities that the engineer would feel would be appropriate. Okay. Um, do you know who authorized the continuance of the paving once the original contract ended? Who authorizes it? Yes. Uh, no, I wouldn't know who would authorize it beyond the contract scope. Okay, so you have no idea who gave the company the go ahead to continue paving beyond no, I don't. the expiration we, of the first contract? The, the bottom line is you cannot go over the contracted amount. Okay, but somebody authorized them to do so. Uh, it appears that did happen. Uh, okay. It, okay, but you don't know who did. I don't know who would have given the okay, you can go beyond the contract. And for the most part, any contractor who would come in here and work from municipalities is pretty much aware that 
Procurement laws require you to have a contract. Certain dollar amounts are in that contract. When you, when you look at the allocated funds for paving, will you say that uh, there wasn't enough money allocated uh, to continue the additional paving? Or was there money in the budget that still had not been spent? There were a number of uh, letters that come from the Department of Transportation uh, depicting how much money would be bestowed upon the city for the Chapter 90. Uh, there was uh, one that originally came and promised us X amount of money, guaranteed it, and then there was a supplemental appropriation from the state in the Chapter 90 accounts uh, that was originally intended to be one amount and it came back a different amount. So that threw a little bit of wrench into their work. Uh, and then the city itself had ponying up about a half a million dollars to continue road work as well. Okay, so will you say then that if the city would have chosen to continue the contract uh, with a proper bid procedure, there would have been money to pay for those additional yeah, I think there was a bit of a communication breakdown between uh, the engineer, the mayor, and the procurement office. Okay. Um, I think there was a belief that they could extend their contract given that uh, they had one in place and they were anticipating additional funds. And I believe at first that they felt that it was going to be a pretty much uh, basic procedure just to extend their contract. And then uh, I believe that <clears throat> and I'll let the engineer expound on it a bit, but I believe at the time that the mayor also went up to the procurement office to ensure that that was in fact the case and got the same uh, feedback. Mm -hmm. And then as uh, work started to proceed from that point, a uh, couple weeks maybe went by and then it was a, uh, days went by and it was a cease and desist. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a reversal of the opinion. Is there any report at all uh, on the uh, quality of work that was done? And uh, is, there, is, is, is there anything that, that we can look at uh, that indicates that the work was done properly, that the work that we have been billed for was actually done? Uh, yeah, I would say that with the amount of oversight that was provided mm -hmm. by both the administration and the engineer, uh, they, they walked every inch of those roads. I'm sorry? They walked every inch of those roads. Okay. To ensure that what we asked for was being done. Uh, late into the season, there was work continuing into the area where it was getting beyond a reasonable temperature, mm -hmm. uh, which for the most part, I uh, wasn't involved too much in any of the road work other than I know they're out there, the engineer is there, this is the contract and amount, this is the method we're gonna use. But when you get into the colder weather, you have to have some concerns that this is a hot weather project and here we are getting late into the season. And in a couple of instances that we know of now that have popped up that uh, those uh, sus suspicions were, were founded. And we have a couple of issues that have uh, surfaced. Mm -hmm. It is my understanding that Councillor uh, Vasquez asked you to uh, provide a brief summary uh, of at least an inspection, a visual inspection of the work, the last jobs that were done. Uh, do you have anything to add to that? Well, we do know that a couple of areas that have become uh, problematic, uh, Hamilton, which we had pointed out, uh, we know is a wet area. We were concerned about that when this method was decided upon. Um, I know that uh, Salem and Newton Street is another area that's notoriously uh, heavy with groundwater, uh, produces a lot of pothole type situations in there. Um, like I say, this method is not for every uh, application. And in some areas, uh, it, w it may have been applied where I don't feel it was appropriate. Uh, I'm sorry, one, one last question. Uh, I understand that uh, Mr. Toomey communicated with you in regard to the warranties, warranty on this 
Uh, am I correct? Can you what? the warranty on the on the job? Warranty. Uh, warranty. Can, can, no. can, can you talk about that? Yes, I can. Uh, if you recall, um, Mr. Isensi, we we spoke about some some people have uh, been complaining about certain roads that haven't been mm -hmm. well taken care of, and there was a question of um, sealing, and there's also a question of. Uh, what was going to be done with them? You had mentioned to me that the contract calls for the, there was a one year warranty, I believe, on the job, and that the contractor would come back and fix these, these little areas as need, as need be. Is that correct? Uh, that is uh, what uh, the engineer and um, part in place had discussed and uh, intimated to me that they would stand behind their work. I will um, say that their work, uh, when done, with the proper methods, uh, seal coated after it's done with a micro surface, uh, works very well. Uh, do less than what they require of their work, uh, you can probably expect you will have issues. If you paint a house and don't prime it, paint's gonna peel. The same thing with road work. If you do what they tell you to do and then seal it properly, you're not going to have an issue. Uh, this, this method seems to work very well in a lot of applications, and particularly well in neighborhoods similar to ours. We still have plenty of curb reveal. Your roads were engineered very, very well many years ago, and essentially you just need to rejuvenate the very top of the hot top. Works great in our neighborhoods. It really does. Uh, is it a difficult situation right now because there was some procurement issues? Absolutely. Uh, did they do the work? Uh, yes, they did. Whoever directed them, uh, I think we, most of the people in this room know how it happened, whether they want to own up to it or not. Um, they did do the work. There are some flaws in their work. Uh, they've intimated that they would come back and uh, do that repair, and I, I believe uh, they're people of their word. This is a follow-up question. Uh, Mr. Asensi, do you have any idea how much the Chapter 90 money was worth to the city? How much came in? Somewhere north of 1.2. 1.2 million? Yeah. All I need is okay. classes. <laughs> A million two ninety three two seventy eight was our FY14 Chapter 90. And on uh, January 15th of 2013, the City Council approved to transfer a free cash of another 500000 so there was available 1,793,278 for road work in the city of Lawrence uh, in FY14. Oh, chapter, nine, chapter 90 money is specifically directed towards road work and sidewalks, that's correct? That's correct. I think it is important to note um, that we actually received two different amounts of chapter 90 and we came up to that amount. Originally it was 969,959. Um, which came in on April 1st, if I'm not mistaken, and then on July 30th, we received an additional amount for $323,320. That's over the $500,000 that the city transferred from free cash? That's correct. There's a total of, what would you say, 1.3 million? 1.793. 1 1.793. Thank you. Councilors, are there any additional questions to either uh, Mr. Isensi, Mr. Anello? Sure, I just actually have a question, not necessarily to Mr. Isensi, but I do have a question for uh, the petitioners, because we do have a letter here that was given or sent to Council President Maldonado making a request. So my series of questions at this point would be for those petitioners, uh, and I'm not sure if now is the time to ask those questions or, or later. I think this is, um, do we have any representation here from? Attorney Ka Caffrey. Yes. Attorney Caffrey. Good evening, Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Matt, Matt Caffrey from the law office of Matt Caffrey in Andover. I represent Howie Rehab, the uh, company that did the work that you've just heard about. And uh, I'd ra rather than regurgitate what, what was just said, um, I, I, in, in essence, we, we agree with what, um, what was just represented to the council. And I think what we're really looking for here is some assistance um, to try to make this right. Um, there's no question that um, at the end of the day, I think, there's some agreement, some consensus that the work was done. Um, there's some consensus uh, on the city side and on our side that we were instructed to do it. 
Um, and there's also consensus that the Procurement Act seems to be the issue here. Um, we can't seem to, uh, we won't be able to receive these funds um, unless we can find a solution to this procedural issue, which is stopping them from getting to us. And so I, in con consultation with the city attorney, um, we racked our brains to try to find a way to do this that uh, made sense given this a unique set of circumstances. And the only thing that we could come up with uh, was a home rule petition, which would allow the city to legally pay these funds. And I think that was, um, I think that was the intention when this all started. I really do. And, and uh, again, this is not a situation. So many times you see these situations come up. I, you know, we all read about them in the paper. Someone trying to get something for nothing, or someone acting in bad faith, or, or something like that. And I don't think any of those things are present here. I think this was truly a procedural issue and um, uh, you know I, we do I see the city engineer is here um, in a, in, you know, council I'm sure would want to hear from him as well but a very good relationship between this um, company and the city We've worked for the city in the past wants to work for the city in the future wants to do the work to repair any issues that may come up uh, very energized very 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 acting in good faith at all times so that's what we're here to do is try to make this right um, and, and come out with the right result. And that's, uh, that's essentially it. And I'll be happy to answer questions. And I, my client has come up. Um, uh, he, uh, Mr. Chappelle, was on site. He had direct contact um, with um, the city engineer on these issues. Um, and um, he's happy to answer questions as well. So. All right. So I guess my question is just I, I just don't understand it's not necessarily true. I want to know why, um, even though there was a contract that expressly stated how much money was going to be spent on road repaving or repair, that, that the contractor decided to go beyond that scope and actually do more work when they would put themselves in some sort of jeopardy as to whether or not the city would pay them. You, you put your finger right on it, Counselor, right on it. Uh, th that would never happen. Uh, the, with the facts of this case, and again, I, I'll defer to the city engineer to let him tell you the city side on this, but uh, at the end of the first contract, my client declared that he was heading home, uh, back to New York. All of his men were done. Uh, thank you very much. And he would, they were packing up and getting ready to go. And it was at that moment in time that the city engineer said, please don't go. And chapter 90 monies have been made available. We're going to extend your contract. Please stay and do the following roads. It, had it not been for that authorization, that instruction uh, from the city engineering department, my client would have left. Uh, he, had, he had done the contract. And so the notion was there was going to be an extension of an existing contract, uh, a renewal, however you want to term that. The person in charge, as far as my client could tell, was a city engineer, uh, direct authorization. Uh, the, the administration knew about it. Um, the city pur purchasing agent knew about it. Um, everybody's on board. Uh, everyone's telling my client to pave, and pave quickly, keep paving. And um, so it's not a situation where my client decides unilaterally he's going to keep paving because he thinks he can get more money. My client's ready to go home. He's done. It's, it's the opposite. It, the city reaches out to my client and says, please stay and keep paving. And, uh, and so he does. He does the right thing uh, based on a representation that was made to him by the party that my client believed in good faith was, uh, was the authority in charge. That's how it happened. I'm, I'm still confused because by all accounts, your client is a very successful businessman. Um, he, I'm not sure how long he's been in this business. Maybe you can enlighten me. How long has your client been doing these roads? 30 years. 30 years. And so he has 30 years of experience doing this kind of work. And, and I'm just surprised that with that kind of experience, again, you, that you would go into, uh, into some work where there's no assurances right. that there will be money to pay. That's an awful risk. It Ter would terrible. seem to me that a businessman would take. Terrible risk, and, and obviously one now that's it's, it's, all, it's all on him at this point. But uh, you have to understand that the context here was uh, my, my client was acting in good faith. He was, he was being told that there would be a renewal of the contract. 
And he was being told that by the people he believed were in charge. Uh, it, I guess it could have fallen on him to say, no, we're, we're leaving. We're, gonna, we're not, we're not going to do that. We're going to leave. Uh, and uh, we'll call you later when we, uh, it, it, it could, I guess it could have happened that way. But instead, uh, my client, in good faith, believed the person he was talking to. Uh, the Chapter 90 monies had arrived, according to uh, his understanding from the city engineer. It was all a matter of just putting some paper in place. You're here already. Please keep paying. And, and that's how it happened. And, you know, I, I understand that, you know, it, I think somebody mentioned it earlier, the bidding procure, the, uh, procurement act is complex. It's unique to Massachusetts in its, uh, in its uh, form here. And, um, and its results, the results of the bidding failure to follow the Procurement Act are particularly uh, devastating in Massachusetts. This is a New York contractor. I'm not claiming, I'm not, I, I'm not here to tell the council that we are, are looking for a handout. We're not, we're not looking for a handout. We're, we're asking the council to consider the equities of this situation. Uh, this was a situation that should have never happened. If my client could re rewind the tape, he would do it differently, obviously. Um, but I think that in this situation, you, got, you are uniquely situated to correct this. Um, so that's the issue, I think, before you. So if the city were to say, for whatever the reasons are, that the city will not pay this money, what is the recourse that your client has? It's a very difficult situation for my client, given the, the way the Uniform Procurement Act reads. It's a very, very difficult situation. I mean, this is, you know, frankly, this is a situation where, um, and the reason we're before you in this way is because um, we look at that as a, um, uh, how do I put this? Um, I don't want to call it a fatal uh, decision on my client's part, but it's, it's, it's a very difficult uh, hill to climb unless we have some assistance by the city to make this right. Uh, the city's in possession of something that my client provided. Um, I've heard tonight very little in the way of criticism of the work that was done. Um, and um, I've driven down uh, Mount Vernon. I know many of you probably have also. That was a train wreck of a street before my client got a hold of it. It's now a fairly decent ride to go down Mount Vernon. Um, there's a, just a concept here of, of um, paying for what you, what you had and paying for what you got. Um, this did happen in a, unfortunately, in a political context, and I'm aware of that. I understand uh, the background to this. I understand that. I'm hoping that, that this council will see beyond that, that um, those political issues, whatever they may have been, uh, if the council would decide not to assist us in this regard, would fall completely on my client, a private contractor who has no, has no horse in this race. He, all he did was do what he was told to do. And again, I, I don't want to say this uh, without you having the opportunity to speak to your, uh, to your own people, but I don't think anything that I'm saying is going to be disputed by any of the people inside the city. I think everyone agrees on what happened here. Um, and it makes it a particularly uh, unfair result uh, given these circumstances. So that's where we are. Um, very few options. We're here uh, asking for you to look at this uh, fairly. Um, and again, answer any questions you have. Um, I, I don't frankly know what, we, what we, our next step would be if you don't assist us. I'm sorry, was the last part of it? I said I don't know what our next steps would be if you choose not to uh, assist us. It sounds to me as though you're reliant on on the city engineer. It sounds like, if I'm, I don't want to, but I, I just read your letter real quickly, and it, your letter here certainly would lead me to believe, if, if not indirectly, then expressly, and that's where you're hanging, your client's hanging your hat. Cer certainly, that was a, there was a lot of contact at that level, um, and uh, that's the person that, um, you know, there were other folks who were also aware. Uh, we believe the city purchasing agent was well aware of where we were on a daily basis. My client, not me. My, where my client was, what they were doing, what they were paving. So there's, there's a con the concept here of, of the city being aware of what was happening is, is to me, is very clear. Uh, the city understood what was going on um, and understood, too, that there was this concept of an extension that was going to happen to the existing contract. The problem is that everyone apparently got that wrong. What you had to do in this case was go through the, bidding, uh, going th go through the Procurement Act procedures to get this done, and that didn't happen. So here we are. And, um, you know, the, 
I think these things happen from time to time. In this case, again, it's, a, it's an extreme result for my client. It's a $300,000 result for my client. I'm sorry to interrupt. Can you explain to me the role of the purchasing agent? Um, I, I understand what the role it is, but the role of the purchasing agent as here, because I, I read it's supposed to, in the press reports today, and I, there's no email associated with it. There's an attachment that had that email that's not in the packet that was submitted just recently. Gonna, that, that they put a cutoff and said, we're not going to pay anything beyond that $89,000. Yeah. But I'm, what I'm hearing is that there's something different, that you so, said they were complicit in well, I, going forward on that? I, I want to stop short of saying words like complicit. Okay. I'm not, I, think, I think everyone here acted in good faith. I think on both sides, everyone, the concept was that there was going to be some form of renewal or extension of an existing contract. That's what I think everyone thought was going to happen. And what instead happened was the same day that my client finished the last street of the streets that were in the second list, that day they received word, no, they saw, got a sign off from uh, Mr. Wall uh, on the total square, f square yardage. I use the word footage in my, I apologize, that's my mistake, it's square yardage. Uh, they, on August 6th, uh, August 6th, Mr. Wall signed off on the total square yardage. And on that same day, the day that we finished, um, we get the email saying that, oh, you've exceeded your total square yardage. You should never have done that. And how do I put this? I, I don't think anyone intentionally, I, I would not attribute, I'm not prepared to attribute um, a malicious intent here. I, I, I'm not prepared to do that. I am saying that, that at the point in time that this was discovered, it's how do I put it? It is particularly hard for my client to have that happen on the day that they're finishing their work. Um, it, 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 it is a, um, it's a coincidence, but it, it's a hard thing for my client. So what I guess I'm saying is that the city was aware um, through either the city engineer uh, as well as for the purchasing uh, department that uh, we were doing this work. I think the mayor was aware, um, and I say that only because of what I read in the paper today, as I'm sure some of you might have, but um, apparently was on site occasionally. And um, it does seem under these circumstances that this should not be completely visited upon my client. It just doesn't seem like a fair result to me. Um, but I'll, I'll leave that to the council uh, to talk about and think about. I'll, I'll, I'll stand back for a moment. I believe Councilor Toomey has a question. Yes, just, uh, I, I'm reading this letter that was submitted and it says here, where potential additional work exceeds 25% of the original contract price, the act requires the city to invite bidders. Was the additional work greater than 25% of the contract price? Yes, it was, yep. It was indeed. Yep, and you know, that we go back again to this notion, I mean, there's the letter of the law, it is what that, what the Uniform Procurement Act requires, and then there's what we might be able to do to address what happened here. And um, that's what we're asking for. I, I think we understand the concepts there, um, notwithstanding my client's understanding. Uh, we, as his attorneys, we understand what that means at this point. And that's why we're seeking uh, to do this lawfully through a home rule petition. That's, how, that's the only way to get to the result that I think we need to get to here, um, that I think is required yeah, to make this right. Are you, are you at liberty to give us any numbers? On, on what the what? contract was worth and what this was? Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, I, okay. So the, all the paperwork on this is in the form of the attachments, which are the exhibits one through six. And, um, we don't have that. We don't, we have, don't that. have a. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. We don't have that. Well, I'll be happy to circulate. Copies of that. Okay. I'll be happy to circulate among the entire uh, council uh, the the package that I sent to uh, Councilor Maldonado. It has all the paperwork that yes. analyzes. Yes. The uh, let me let me pass it along in case you. Uh, I'm going to be making copies to provide you with that before the uh, next uh, council meeting. So I, I think, you know, what we're hoping that we can get from this council is, is at least a, um, a referral back to the um, city council, um, a positive referral, uh, so that we can present um, this case to them and, and let them take a look at the equities here and decide for themselves whether uh, this would be a, um, an appropriate use of a home rule petition to correct what is a, a, an unfair result at this point in time. Where would I find those numbers on the what exhibits? Oh, sorry, so the, uh, so the numbers of the actual contract amounts, uh, if you go to exhibit five, 
that gives you this, Exhibit 5 is the sort of the breakdown invoice that was issued at the end of the job with a total of 379,000 and change. Mm -hmm. And from that, you must deduct the check, which is attached as Exhibit 6 for 84,979. And that leaves a balance of $294,444. Which the $84,979, it's what was written in the original contract. That's the original amount of the original contract. And, um, and we were, and that the, the balance that's owed is for all of the extra work, all those extra streets that we were told to pave. Councilor Tumi? So the original contract was for $84,979? Correct. That was the original contract. That's the value of the original the contract. The value of the original contract. And it's important to, just for me to say this, that those, the terms of the original contract, has, it's a per square yard rate. And so that's what it is. That rate stayed the same for the, because we, we were, again, under the impression that what was happening here was a renewal, uh, an extension of the original contract. So the rate stayed the same. It, nothing changed. We just kept paving, and um, and and, that, and the result is, if you pave an additional um, sixty-eight thousand square feet, sixty-eight thousand eight hundred and twenty-five square feet, you end up with um, a much larger amount. So. so, I don't know if the council would like to hear any more from me or from my client. I, I, I have a question on this, Mr. Tony. Council Council um, in the letter that you sent me, dated January 13th, um, <clears throat> there seems to be a, a, a confusion on whether there were square yards or square feet. That's entirely my fault, Councillor. Okay. So we, we are talking about square yards, not square feet. That's my so fault. So all the information here are square yards, not square feet. Am I correct? Thank you, Councillor. Yes, that's my, I just, I was typing quickly and I, okay. I should know better. I don't have any more questions. Okay, uh, any additional questions? Okay, so to verify, we're asking for the amount of $294,444.08. And this is for um, the work that was done in two previous occasions, in, in, in two different occasions. The first was July 22nd to July 25th. Um, and it's a uh, total of 17,906 um, square yard of paving or right. uh, resurfacing. Mm -hmm. And the second project was from July 25th to July 6th uh, for a total of 68,825 square yard. Um, both projects total 86,731 <coughs> square yard. Uh, and that's how that, that would be the calculation, and we'd be seeking your support for a home rule petition. I don't think we can ask you. I would like to ask you to authorize the payment of that amount, but I think where we are right now is I think we're seeking your support of a home rule petition that would ask that those funds be made available for payment of that bill. And That's just where for, I think we are. For the public interest and for, for them to have a better understanding, uh, the total sum after the project was completed, it was 379,423 and eight cents. That would be the total value. The yep. total value. Yep. Of which um, 84,979 was, was paid, paid yes. already. That leaves that balance. And we have a remaining balance of 294,444 and eight cents. Yes, that's right, Mr. Chair. So we have all of the numbers correct. Yes. Um, Councilors, are there any additional questions for uh, Attorney Coffrey? I, would like, I, I don't have any more questions, but I would like to ask uh, Mr. Wall uh, some questions. Before, uh, before Mr. Walls comes before the podium, um, okay. I know that when uh, Attorney Coffrey spoke, he said that uh, you know, we're in the best interest of coming to a solution to this, whether it is, whatever the solution might be at the end of the day. But I think it's important to let any of our uh, city employees that will come before us to speak, if they feel that they would like to go on executive session to discuss any of, the, uh, of this matter, I will gladly uh, support that and I will ask 
uh, Councillor Sugule. So, uh, Mr. Walls, uh, please come before us um, and give us your thoughts. Good evening, Councillors. My name is Andrew Wall. Councilor. I am the acting city engineer at the present moment. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, may I interrupt for a moment, please? I, I, I bef and I, I do want to hear from Mr. Wall, but before we get to that point, uh, just because of the nature of this discussion, I, I would like to get just a little more clarification from the city attorney so they can mm -hmm. provide some guidance to us as to, you know, we're all here to protect the people mm -hmm. that we represent in Definitely. the city, and that's, of course. that's our client. Uh, <laughs> And I just want to make sure that we're doing the best job that we can. I want to get that kind of guidance from the from the, the city attorney. Thank you. If you don't mind. Thank okay. you, Councilor. Mr. Attorney. Good evening again, Councilors. Uh, Charles Body, City Attorney. Uh, obviously, we have a potential lawsuit here against the city, and so we should be mindful that this being a public hearing, the statements are made are public record, and they could be used in that litigation. So I'm not sure, uh, as much as I respect uh, the council's uh, interest in the matter, I'm not really sure where the conversation would go. And I think mm -hmm. we have to be mindful of the fact that if we have some liability, it shouldn't be discussed in this forum, or at least uh, not in open session. Uh, so I think the, uh, the chairman is very correct and very astute in noting that. And I would caution us as to where the discussions may lead. Yes, I agree with you, with you, Attorney Bodie. I think that um, uh, in asking questions to our city employees, and obviously I think we should go in a sec into a second session so that we can discuss that, and then uh, whatever decisions we come up with out of a second session can be done publicly. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Okay. A motion to go on uh, to Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. 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 Chair. Um, I don't think about the, of the open meetings law allows executive session because of the potential or the threat of a suit. In fact, no suit has been mentioned tonight. What I've heard was we don't know what our options are, but we don't think they're very good. We think, in fact, our only option is to go to the state and ask for well, If you don't mind, okay, we can you, come, can to you come to the, the microphone. Okay. Councillors? I've been covering you four years. It's a pleasure to finally speak to you uh, as a group. Um, I think the state's uh, open meetings law um, allows for a um, executive session when there is a real suit pending. Uh, I haven't even heard the threat of a suit. In fact, I've heard the opposite. I've heard this, uh, uh, the uh, petitioner here say that uh, he thinks his options are very, very limited. So I, I would object. Um, and I would ask at least that you adjourn this meeting rather than go into the executive session so that I have the opportunity to have our, uh, my, my newspaper's uh, counselor um, review your decision before it's made because if after it's made, we will challenge it. And if after it's made, um, the session is found to be illegal through the normal process, then I think anything you do in there will be um, invalidated. So I ask that you reconsider uh, your effort to go, your your decision, any decision to go into executive session. We object. I, I have to disagree with you. I think that if it comes to a point of litigation and uh, individuals in the, in the administration or in the, um, in the, in the uh, DPW department needs to be uh, punished for wrongdoing or not wrongdoing, whatever the case may, the case may be, I think that uh, those are things that in order to protect the interests of the taxpayer and the interests of the city, I think we definitely should go into a second session to discuss those things. So I, I have to disagree with you. And I understand that as the newspaper, you would like to get as much information, public information. And I am sure that that information will come out. It will come out, I promise you, um, so that the uh, citizens of Lawrence will know exactly what happened. I uh, appreciate your point of view. I hope you appreciate mine. If you wouldn't mind, I ask instead of going with, into executive session, you adjourn this session so that we can have a counselor uh, review any action um, beforehand, not afterwards, when it won't do us any good. Thank you. Thank you for your, your point of view. Um, the reason why I brought it up is because, um, you know, uh, Attorney Caffey did mention we don't know what could happen next. Um, and I think it's important for us to, to cover our bases before anything were to happen. 
And I think it is important to protect the best interests of uh, the citizens, which are the people that we serve as a, as a community. Um, if it's the wish of counselors to do it, and with the blessing of our city attorney, um, you know, I believe that, that that will be the right way to go. Um, um, he's got to speak. He's gonna hear this. Councilor Laplante. Sure. I just um, a couple things. One is I I, I want to get here our, our city attorney's view on it. Number one and number two. I I, I just want to ask again to the council for um, for um, Highway Rehabilitation Corporation, um, and I'll ask a very pointed question. Um, should this again? I'll ask. Uh, is there <laughs> The, the, the likelihood of litigation should this not go forward, I mean, is that something that you're looking to pursue? Is that, I mean, I just, would this, would you, is this something that you're seriously considering, not considering? I mean, where, where is this on the whole spectrum? I, I, without disclosing to the council my discussions with my client, uh, all the options are on the table. So we would prefer this option. This is what we would like to do. But if you're asking me, have we ruled out litigation? No, we haven't ruled it out. Uh, we're looking at everything uh, equally. We're, this is the best course of action, I think, that we could take. If we were not successful here, we'd have to leave all of our options open. I don't know what we would do next, but litigation is one of those, I suppose. So that would be, that's on the table and something that you're actively considering? If we're not successful here, yes, it would have to be, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, if you don't mind, if we could ask Attorney Boddy, now that he knows Essentially, there's two sides of the story here, and I'd like to get some guidance and some counsel. There are two sides to the story, and obviously the public has a need to know, but we have a need to be able to present the best defense possible and to, to defend against paying a claim which we feel we don't have any legal liability to pay. Uh, I'm concerned not so much as to whether this is a disciplinary matter, uh, but I'm more concerned as to um, the nature of the conversations that will be discussed and including whether some of those conversations involve attorney-client privileged communications. Um, respectfully, as much as I understand uh, your interest in the, the background of this, it's not necessary, we could, we could avoid the issue altogether with respect to whether to go into executive session, which I would still advise you to do if you were going to proceed, uh, simply because I don't know where this is going, and it is discussing the strategy of our dealing with um, a claim against the city. Uh, but in any event, uh, these are discussions that could easily be had offline. Um, they're not discussions that necessarily need to be at the council table in the council chambers, and I'm sure any of the um, employees of the city who are here tonight would be happy to have such discussions with you to clarify matters, myself included. I happen to have some information on this um, which has developed over time and it's information that I intend to use if a claim is brought in, in a litigation forum uh, such as Superior Court as opposed to going through the Home Rule Petition procedure. So I'm not sure that you're going to get any additional um, information that's going to satisfy your desire to understand how a situation occurred. But, I mean, we're here, it doesn't have to be here, it's, but of course, if you choose to go into executive session, then I don't think that there's any reason to wait so that the uh, newspaper can then get some sort of injunctive relief on action that's maybe, you know, um, contemplated and <coughs> may not have any bearing. In other words, in other words, what is discussed in executive session may be that which is strategy and therefore subject to an executive session exclusion to the open meeting law. So. Will you recommend that we conduct an executive session at the city council level or? I, I would not recommend that because I think if we recommend that, that now we're going to engage in a potential lawsuit over whether you can have an executive session or not. Okay. And I think that frankly, uh, the information can, can be communicated to you other than in an open meeting, and that's the best way, and it saves, uh, you know, the, the city uh, attorney's office time, it saves you, your time, it saves court time, it saves uh, the newspaper time, mm -hmm. it saves the vendor, uh, the paver's time. 
I think that the, the information you seek is, a, is readily available. And I think, as I said, I think uh, if you wanted to make a phone call, uh, the people sitting in this room would be happy to tell you uh, the background and answer your questions honestly. Okay. Uh, Attorney uh, Caffrey is recommending a solution uh, to this problem. Uh, Mr. Bodie, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Yes, Attorney Caffrey is recommending a solution to do a home rule petition. Is this something that you, the two of you have discussed? We've discussed as a possibility? it. We've discussed it as a possibility. Um, it, is, it is the best and most open and a lawful means of a, obtaining that result. We have a vendor who admittedly performed services, but they were services for which there was no contract. As a result of there being no contract, it's illegal for us to pay. A home rule petition would, would create an exception to the general law that prohibits us making those payments. It would require uh, an approval of this council, then approval and signature by the mayor, and then it would go to Beacon Hill, at which point it would have to be voted on by the uh, general court and approved. I think it's highly unlikely that we'll ever get to Beacon Hill. Mm -hmm. But it, w it is a method, if the city chooses to go along with it, it is a method and it's open and it's honest and it's fair and it's provided for in the law. So it is a means, it's, it's perhaps the best means and uh, be, by the nature of the fact that it requires legislative acts both at the city level and at the state level uh, it, the, no one can say that this is being done behind closed doors and the uh, procurement laws are designed to prevent wheeling and dealing behind closed doors. So it would, it would, it would be uh, uh, compliant with the general nature and, and uh, terms of procurement law. Okay. I don't have any more questions. Any additional questions, Councillor? <clears throat> Mr. Walsh? And again, if necessary, and if at any given point anyone feels that we should go in executive session. Uh, there's no problem. If not, um, I will gladly keep the, everything open. Basically, I'll give you a quick uh, history of the, this whole construction season. Uh, in May of 2012, the city engaged in putting out the bid, hot in place recycling, microsurfacing, paving, and regular asphalt reconstruction work where there were three contracts awarded, one to Highway Rehab Incorporated from New York, one to Seal Coating Incorporated of Hingham, Mass, and one to Newport Construction from Nashua, New Hampshire. We worked that construction season, completed the season, completed all three contracts. All three contracts had a clause for a renewal if the city was satisfied with the work, and we were satisfied with the work, and it was contingent upon Chapter 90 money being there to have all three renewed. Unfortunately, we were only to, able to renew two, highway rehab and seal coating, because there wasn't enough money to do traditional paving. We engaged in a renewal of highway rehab's contract, at which point we used $500,000 that was mentioned earlier in city allocated money to do that work. When that $500,000 was finished, that contract was finished, Highway Rehab left the city and went on to other cities and towns in the area that he has work scheduled. Chapter 90 in the meantime was supposed to have been supplied to the cities and towns, but it was not. It was delayed. When it finally arrived, it was, it was supposed to have been a full $1.5 million, and it only arrived $969,959 was delivered in the first round. In order to keep both contractors busy, we just, it was decided that we had already spent $500,000 of city money, so automatically the seal coating company needed to have $500,000 in order to seal everything that had been recycled. Then we looked at what was left on the, on the agenda and came up with a cost and decided that, okay, uh, the highway rehab would get approximately $85,000 and the other 880 some odd thousand dollars would go to seal coating so that everything could be sealed properly as, as required. 
We began the $85,000 contract with Highway Rehab. Under the, under the impression given to us by the procurement office that when the second round of Chapter 90 kick money came in, we would be allowed to modify that contract and supply them with more money. Uh, I had that conversation, and then a few days later, I, the mayor asked me the same question. The mayor and myself at the time went to see the procurement officer and received the same information from her, the exact same answer, yes, we could do that. We then proceeded to continue working. That's where the issue lies. That's why they have a $294,000 outstanding bill with us. When I went back to the procurement office to ask them what the process was, what paperwork she needed in order to extend that contract with the additional Chapter 90 money, I was then told, no, that's not right. You can't do that. And she immediately, she immediately sent out a cease and desist order to the contractor. And that's what is, that is basically what happened in that uh, instance. Uh, we then had to rebid the work. And again, Highway Rehab was issued another contract, which they fulfilled coming in under the allotted money. So now is the time for questions. OK, so the procurement office initially told you, yes, it's possible? Twice. Twice. They told, me my, they told myself when I went up, because I was concerned I've had issues with the office before on contracts and, and money. So I went up before we finalized the contract with Highway Rehab for $85,000 to make sure that that was true. And I was told, yes, the mayor had the same concerns. And the two of us went to see her and got the exact same answer, yes, it could be done. OK. Was there any communication <clears throat> after uh, the procurement office said, no, that that's not possible anymore. That, was there any explanation as to what happened? She, said, she, simply stated, she simply stated that they had a cease and desist because the, they had gone over the allowed signed contract amount. And that's all, that's all she gave in an email to the, to the company. And then she, she also sent me a copy but of that. But they email. knew that when you, got, when you approached her? No. Oh, they didn't know that? No. Okay. When we approached her, there was a chance that there would be extra money available. And so the question was, can that extra money that's going, going to come in be added to what's already, okay. already in, in existence? And the answer was yes. Okay. So when I went to go do that process, I was told, no, you can't do that. So it, I was told no after the fact. OK, so the money could have been added, but there was no explanation as that the process had to be started all over or anything like that? Nothing. OK. Any additional questions, counselors? Um, at, a, at that moment uh, that we were told that there was going to be additional money, did we have a letter that stated that? Did we have any documentation? That the the uh, governor's office sends out generic letters mm -hmm. at certain times of the year, and one, initially they sent out a letter stating, you know, that, that all these lovely things happened and there's going to be lots of money and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, a couple, a month after that happened, they sent out the actual letter that said the first money is going to be 900 and some odd thousand dollars. They then sent a supplemental letter saying that additional monies will be released shortly, but they never specified how, what, what shortly meant. Um, investigation by asking the, the, the district state aid office and the state aid engineer for the state gave me the information that it would be approximately what the time frame that it came out. So I had an idea it would be coming. I just didn't have an exact date when it would be released at that, at that time. I knew it would be in, within that month, but not, you know, it wasn't going to be on the 15th, for instance. So that the additional money, it's not part of well, we had received April 1st, which is 900,000. Correct. Oh, 969,000. Right. So, but we did receive on July 30th an additional 323,000. Which is not Which was the money that we were expecting. That's the money we were expecting to extend the contract with. So for a total of 1.2 million. Correct. Almost 1.3. Right. 
Do we have any additional questions? No. Councillor Toomey. I understand you correctly. That money never came in. Is that right? The 323000 uh, No, it came in. It came in. It so came the, in. So the whole process here hangs on the fact that the additional work was 25, was more than 25% over the original contract. In other words, the money is there to pay them? The money, the, money was, the money was in our bank account, yes, to pay them. The problem was there was no process, process to, to increase their contract so that the money, 100% of the money would be there to pay them their full $371,000. Okay, so we have that money available to them. It's just that the, whole, the process was not followed uh, to make it le legitimate or legal. Correct. So in addition, if, if the home rule petition goes into effect and it's approved, the, the money is, the city has the money to pay it. The city would, yes. Councillor Sumi, do you I, have any more questions? I'm also. Okay, Councillor LaPlante. That's the question I actually want to ask. Thank you, Mr. Wall, Mr. Ryanello. This program is a reimbursement program, so we don't have the money in the bank. The, the letters that uh, uh, the engineer was, uh, Mr. Wall was referring to from DOT is, we get a letter every spring, you know, this is the, but the, the governor puts a budget package in front of the legislature, and he originally indicated he wanted to provide uh, uh, more uh, Chapter 90 money than the previous year. Those are, those are uh, letters of, uh, you know, and, and it always cautions us, this is just what we're proposing. You can't spend the money until the legislature approves the bill. So there was a May 31 letter which indicated that on May 13th, um, there was a, a bill filed and it projected Chapter 90 funds were gonna be 900,000. Then in uh, July, it, it was up to 1.2 million and that bill passed. Um, so that was the 1.29 million that we get allocated. Um, and, and then the engineer has to work with the Department of Transportation to, to qualify certain streets under the Chapter 90 program. Once we submit uh, a payments or our expenses under Chapter 90, the state reimburses us for whatever our expenses are as long as we spent it in accordance with the Chapter 90 regs. So query whether even with a home bill uh, uh, legislation, would Chapter 90 reimburse us for expenditures that were not properly procured? I just want to throw that out there. So that's actually, the a, that's actually a doubt. So the, the, the potential cure here, you n are not certain that that would fix the problem. Uh, I, I, I think we would have to check with Department of Transportation on that one. So if we go through they're, this. They're the ones who approve, right. uh, you know, and, and Andy, uh, uh, after each season, he submits all, he gets all the invoices that we paid, and I don't know what, what particular uh, information's required of the state engineer, but, but I do know from, uh, from my ex municipal experience that city engineers across the Commonwealth uh, uh, have, to, uh, uh, have to create a, a package for the state to approve to get reimbursed, and that's all the invoices and all the contracts and all that stuff. And then I think the, you know, what streets were done and how were they done and uh, whatever engineers do. <laughs> I could just uh, maybe clarify uh, two points. The first is that the money is not available because not being able to pay it lawfully, additional work was done. At least that's what I'm informed. Mm -hmm. Say that again. The money is not there, which is the money. Kind of the counter. money is no longer there okay. because not ha being able to pay it, since the there was no. The issue here isn't one of 25 percent. The issue here is that any extension to the con to the contract for additional work was not done before the work was performed. And we're not allowed to make payment for labor or services delivered when there is no contract in place. It's a, um, I don't want to say a pervasive problem, but it is a problem that surfaced before in the city uh, in various departments and we've refused payments. Um, in this, so it's not, I want to make sure that we're all clear that the issue here is that there was no extension of any sort that was done before the work was performed. Had we had a contract in place, we might be looking at a different result, but there was no contract. Seeing that there was no contract in place, the work was ordered to be stopped. We analyzed whether there was a method by which to pay 
this contractor for the work performed, when it was determined that there was none, additional work was then performed under a contract and the money spent for additional paving. That's what I'm led to believe. Oh, whoa, whoa. So, so, so whatever that sum is, we went ahead and then we went back to the contractor and engaged in a new contract with them to begin further paving? I don't know if it was with this vendor or someone else, but yeah, we, we did additional paving work because the funds, the, the additional funds uh, couldn't be spent on this work. Uh, well, I'm curious. I mean, can we, can someone tell me if, what well, the attorney here is telling us is that, is that payment was stopped with this contractor because it went beyond the scope. And then, we, so we had a, Ultimately, we had a, a sum of money we that, we, that, that we had, and then we said, you know, we need to spend this money to do the work that we need to do. So we went out to contract with who? Do we know who, who got into that contract? I don't know. Could someone answer that question, please? Another contract was issued. Uh, state aid in the amount of 300 and some odd dollars was made available. Uh, from my understanding, uh, we weren't going to be paying for the work that was not done and procured correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a feeling that that three hundred thousand uh, dollars should not be left on the table at the chapter ninety state level. Uh, uh, we would lose it. Okay, so who? So I mean, can you tell another me another contract went out? Okay, again, highway rehab bid on that and was awarded that contract. Who, who was awarded? Highway Rehab. So the same, the same people Correct. that are looking for the previous money received that money anyway for other work. They did additional, additional streets. Correct. And they knew by the time they accepted that that they weren't going to get paid because we put a stop. We as a city put a stop on that earlier, and then we've asked them to do more work, and yet they still continue to go ahead and do that work. You're correct. So I, I'm sorry, I'm putting myself in a, in a place of a businessman here. So I just got essentially ramrod on a contract, and yet I still go back looking for another contract to do more work, even though, even though potentially I I've somehow feel like I've been unjustly dealt with on a previous contract. Am I missing something here? You may want to take that up with them. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a businessman, so I, I, that's why I look, I look for businessmen to provide that kind of insight as to why, they, why the, that would happen. Um, okay. Mr. Chairman? Sure. May I uh, ask Mr. Bode again? Go ahead. Uh, Council President? Uh, Mr. Mr. Bode? Mr. Bode, you mentioned that we don't have the money. We don't have, we don't have those 294,000. We don't have, no, we don't have the money. We don't have the money. Correct. And if we go ahead and do a home group petition, where is that money gonna come from? We'd have to look at the department's budget now to see whether there are funds available or potentially do a supplemental appropriation. Um, I, I don't know what else we might do, but that's, those are a couple of suggestions. Okay, so ha the additional contract that was done after, had that additional contract not been done, there would have been money to pay for that. There may have been money to pay for it, or the money may, we may have lost the money because we didn't spend oh, it. Okay. okay, okay. But we don't know which one would, would have been the case, Mike? No. It would be speculation. Okay. You know, especially on my part. I, I don't, you know, I'm not a, an expert on paving in Chapter 90. If I may, Mr. The, the Chapter 90 money uh, would not be available to pay bills that are not properly procured. Okay. That's the issue. Okay. So if we do a home rule, I'm sorry, to interrupt, may, may I? So if we, do, if we do a home rule petition to go ahead, and the home rule petition would say that, that what? That, we've, that we are permitted to go ahead 
and go beyond the scope of the procurement laws to allow pavement for work that's already been performed. Mm -hmm. Despite any laws to the contrary. That even though we don't have in Chapter 90 monies to pay for it, we can go ahead and do that. That's what we would have to do. We'd have to, what the form of the home rule petition would take would, would be something to be crafted after you decide that we'd pursue that route or in the process. I could potentially see if this council, and in particular this subcommittee, were interested in pursuing the home rule petition as an option here, that you would then refer it out to my office. We would craft the home rule petition. We would talk to you about how we would deal with the financing and funding portions of it, and then that would come down to you either at this subcommittee level or back at the full council for a vote as to whether you wanted to adopt that home rule petition. And after you deliberate, you might change, decide to change some of the terms in the draft, and we'd file it in the form that's in, in which it's approved, if it were to be approved. But again, it's a, it's a process that would require approval here at the council, and then it would uh, require the mayor to sign. The mayor has already indicated that he is not going to sign. Um, and then it would require it to go to Beacon Hill and to be supported there. Can I ask, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm very inquisitive. Can I ask the, 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 the attorney for the other party, can, can you just help me understand why your client decided that even though that it, it looked as though they were, I'm guessing, uh, aggrieved, I'm not sure that's the right word, because they did work, didn't get paid, that would lend me to believe they were aggrieved, and yet they went back and said, we're still willing to do more work with the city. Can you explain the, the, the mindset as to how that came about? Attorney can, Caffrey? I, you know, I could, I could defer to uh, Mr. Chappelle about why in that particular moment they came back. It is what they do. I mean, that this, is their, this is how they make their money, and um, they view you know, each contract on its own terms. I'm sure that's what happened here. They must have looked at uh, Lawrence as uh, they, have to keep, they have to keep paving. That's how they make their money, and Lawrence is one of their customers. So I understand you're, you're assigning to my client perhaps, uh, you know, uh, anger or whatever it is about what happened. But in the end, they're in business to make money. And, and if the city needs paving and if they've got a contract out to bid, my client wants to be in the running and wants I'm to I'm not bid. angry. I'm just incredulous. I don't no, understand. Not you. I'm, I'm, oh. I'm thinking that you might be considered my, you might be thinking my client was angry and was going to hold a grudge against the city for this, for this snafu. Maybe, but they can't do that. They're in business. They have to move on. So I think what probably happened is they saw the bid come out and they, they decided they were going to go ahead and try to get the contract. I'm, I'm guessing. I mean, that's what they do for a living. So move on. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure. Is there anything that we're missing? I mean, we had a long, I mean, through you, Mr. Chairman, we had a long discussion here. Are there any points that, that have not been stated that we should consider? I think, Dave, did we miss well, I'm just this is, uh, this is the representative from Highway Rehab. Dave Please state your name before you The speak. reason that we had... Uh, state your uh, name. The, I'm sorry. My name is Dave Capel. Thank you. From Highway Rehab. Uh, the reason we had done that last job, all right, because, you know, we do have competition out there, all right, from all over the country, all right, and uh, we had time to do the work. We didn't have a full schedule, and we just figured we... We're able to do the work, so why wouldn't we do the work, all right? Because we knew the bid was coming out, and uh, we would just assume bid it on it ourselves. Uh, we know the streets in Lawrence. We've uh, worked in the city of Lawrence, and uh, we, we, we know we can do it, and that's basically why uh, we came back to do that last contract. Why did you wait until January 13th to send a letter to Mr. Maldonado when you didn't get paid earlier in the year? Why did you wait until the new administration kicked in for this letter to come be sent out? Well, all that goes to the office, all right? I'm, I'm just basically, I do sales and marketing, all right? I deal with Andy, uh, uh, 30 other cities and towns and throughout uh, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut. Uh, you know, Rita said we weren't going to get paid. Asked her what the options were, and she says, basically, you need to get an attorney. That's basically what we did. Uh, you know, I had a go-to person, all right? I... I, I I dealt with one person here, and uh, you know we're not a we're not a uh, a big big company, all right. You know, sure, sure this really kind of like hurts us, all right. But uh, you know, we were basically assured, all right, that we were, we would be paid, um, you know, by by the mayor and uh, 
uh, at the time, and you know, we just had uh, we we just thought that there wouldn't there wasn't going to be a problem. Where there was a will, there was a way. And did you when did you find out for sure that you weren't going to get paid? When did that happen? It was basically the last day. All right, of the uh, working in Lawrence. All right, we basically had like I don't know, maybe 30 streets or whatever it may be. And uh, then Rita had given us a, a cease and desist order, all right, on the last day, all right. The only thing I can't figure out is just why did it take that long, all right, to get that order, all right. If they know we were working in a violation of contract or, or whatever it may be, all right, y you know, they know where we are all the time. Somebody should have stopped us a lot earlier, but we would, we, you know, we, we, you know, we, we, we got to make money. We're not here to work for nothing. You know, so yeah, that's my point. So, when, yeah. so when did you get the no? When I paid, when, was August, September, October? When was that? It, I'm not sure what the date it was, Mason. but it was the last, le, the last Mason. day that we were uh, working here. It, it was um, on August 6th, based on the letter that we have received. Well, that yeah, was so that, that's when it was August 6th. You know, she sent us an email, all right, and basically said uh, uh, we're to cease work. And when did you get your last check from the city for any of the work that you did? You can remember. I don't remember. Ballpark that. was it September? Was it October? When was the last time you finished your project with the city? Well, we had actually three contracts. All right. Uh, maybe I don't know. Maybe Andy could answer that better than I could. When I had the last check. So. I mean, I mean, I'm just. I'm not looking for the exact date. I'm looking for was it September, mid September, late October? Well, if we sent a bill. October. Say it again. Is it? That's fine. So late October, early November, ball frame is when that ballpark is when that was sent out, and so, and so for whatever reason, even though you didn't get paid, all of November, all of December, and then now in January you decided that you wanted to take action for the city to get payment. That's that's really not my decision. That's the owner of the companies. I'm sorry. I said that's my not my decision. That's the owner of the company. Oh, I'm sorry. What's your capacity yeah. with that? No, I'm just sales and marketing for uh, Highway Rehab Corporation. Okay. Who's the owner of the company? Uh, Ken Carr out of uh, uh, Brewster, New York. Okay. But you're, you're the agent here for, for the company? I'm the agent here, and I was dealing strictly with uh, Andy on uh, looking at roads, picking out the right candidates. Uh, he gave me the orders. All right, which ones to do? We looked at them both together and uh, just kind of went from there. So, and when he says go ahead, I, I went ahead. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Chairman, I have a question for Mr. Aranello. Mr. President? Mr. Aranello? Mr. Aranello, if we choose to go the route that has been discussed by our attorney, and the contractor, the contractor's attorney, Mr. Caffrey, uh, is there a possibility that you can look uh, and provide the city council uh, the financial options that are available? Yeah, I'm not aware of, of anything off the top of my head, but I, mean, I can I'm, take a look. I, I understand yeah. right now. Right. And, I mean, you, you're going to have to look at it and then come back with a recommendation if it is something that, that we should consider. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any additional questions on this particular topic? Mm -mm. Any last comments from the DPW department, uh, the city attorney? So. May, I, may I suggest, Mr. Chairman, that this is sent to the full council without a recommendation? Uh, to you, Mr. President, I will, I will instead suggest we keep it here because... Of because eventually the uh, full decision is going to be made at the level, at that full council level. Um, unless you want to keep it here to look at the financial options yes. and discuss the uh, possibility that that we will submit a uh, home rule petition unless you want to do that. I, yeah, I think it will be more viable to 
to table it at this okay. level okay. Um, That's fine. and be able to give some time to um, uh, Mr. Anello to be able to give us some, some information on financials. Uh, and also, it will allow us to, to independently meet with any uh, mm -hmm. department heads okay. or any individuals that might be involved in this particular uh, subject. Um, we could also have the opportunity to review everything, each one of the contracts. Um, so I, I will be looking for a with your, your blessing, of course. No, 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 that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Um, I, I will be looking for a motion to table it at this level right now. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that we're going to have further discussion down the road in, in, in this topic. Um, and I appreciate the business that we're doing with highway um, rehabilitation. Uh, thank you very much for bringing this to the table and, and uh, explaining it to us. And I would also like to thank all city uh, um, employees for <coughs> providing all of this information in a, in a very short time frame. Uh, this discussion has been very helpful to all of us. Um, is there a motion to table? Motion to table. Second. Second. A motion to table has been made. All those in favor say aye. 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 Question, Mr. President. Yes, sir. Uh, since you referred to the ordinance committee, too. Huh? Yes, he was referred to the ordinance committee. Uh, so maybe they should be made aware of. Oh, yes. 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 Okay. Mr. Caffrey, just one, one last thing. Can you send me a correct copy so that? With the square feet. The yards. official document would be square yards instead of square feet. Here, that tomorrow first thing. Thank okay, you. thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, and one more thing. Is there any other documents that we need to review, Mr. Caffrey, that would be helpful in us making a decision, or is this only the letter here that's the most important? Well, the letter and the. Uh, the attachments. Uh, and, and the attachments. Yes. Do you have a copy of that, Council we'll President? You with that. Okay, yes. thank you. That's yeah, it. That, that's, these are the critical documents. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, now moving on to, um, we have covered everything, yeah. Now moving on to table matters. Um, if I had noticed earlier, I would have asked Mr. McCabe <laughs> to speak first. Uh, Mr. McCabe, are you here to speak on both documents? We have two documents um, tabled. One is document 293-13, the acceptance of the 24th. Did we treat that as an emergency at the city council level? Yes, we did. Okay. We treated as the emergency. Um, so maybe we should make a motion to withdraw this one. Here? It should not even be on the council agenda. What? It's we've ad you've addressed this issue. We addressed it at, so the, this yeah. at the city council level. We should not even have this here on the, on yeah, the subcommittee yeah, level. So it should yes. just be eradicated because we had final disposition yeah. at the whole council level. Exactly. Exactly. That's document 293-13. Um, and Mr. McCabe, can I please get a motion to take off the table document 294-13? So moved. Second. Second. A motion has been made on second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Document 294-13 is report uh, Lawrence Youth Team LPD Neighborhood Community Safety Initiative Tax a Tip Program. And it was put on the agenda by Art McCabe, uh, Manager of the Community Development Department. Mr. McCabe. Thank you very much. Um, under the um, uh, Community Safety Initiative we have going with the police department, we've established an anonymous Tax a Tip Program. Um, uh, although the, the program, total cost of the, pro, of the tax tip program uh, is $8,164 and it's being paid for by the Safe Things Except the Youth Initiative entirely. Because it's a five year contract period, even though it's paid in a three year period, it, re it requires formal approval by the council to enter into a contract of more than three years. So, what I'm asking the council to do is approve. Um, entering into the contract with the service company that handles our text to tip program. Councilors, are there any questions? Yeah, I do. Mr. La Le Councilor LaPlante. I'm trying to get the efficacy of this program. I mean, are, you, are we getting many text tips? Um, yeah, it's been a very, very effective so far. Really? Um, yeah. It, what it, what I it have not heard of one person who's told me that they texted a tip in. Not that I know everything in the city, but I would have at least come across at least one person. Hey, yeah, use that text. Well, I'd say, I'd say, two, well. I'd say two things. First of all, we don't know who, who sends stuff into us, but we have gotten pictures. We have gotten text a tip. The whole purpose of the program is to encourage community engagement, because as you know in the city, sometimes citizens are very reluctant to get involved with uh, a crime or reporting a crime or reporting a, um, you know, a, a concern they have within a neighborhood. Yeah. if there's a chance they may be identified or 
for, you know, targeted for retaliation or whatever ostracized within their communities. So many cities throughout the country, many cities in Massachusetts have a, a service for a text-to-tip program so citizens can send in any information they want without any concern about being traced or identified. Um, it's authorized under the grant. It's paid for under the grant. There's a second part of this. Uh, you know, frankly, we're going to be pushing it more, uh, particularly when the warm weather comes. But the second part of it is educating the public about is it really safe? How does it work? So I know we have gotten some tips. I know we have gotten um, uh, some um, helpful information in either investigating crime or preventing crime. But I think the, f the future efficacy of the program be demonstrated as it's more publicized within the community. We had um, started uh, in September with you know, having the electronic bulletin boards around the city. And uh, for instance, with regard to the recent rash of armed robberies, um, you know, the mayor and some of the uh, police department have gone door to door in certain neighborhoods handing out the yellow cards to identify uh, you know, the, the existence of the program and explain the program. Mm -hmm. What we're planning on doing this summer uh, is expanding what we did last summer is actually going into targeted districts and neighborhoods where we know there are hot spots and actually engaging the public, you know, literally just knocking on doors and, and walking streets. Um, last year, as you may recall, you know, we issued a letter to a number of the city councilors, you know, asking if there's any particular things you want done in, in your in individual neighborhoods. We're going to do th the same thing again this summer, you know, so we intensify our efforts to engage the public and make them more confident that, you know, we're all working together to prevent and solve crime. Would you be so kind at some point, and I, I think that, quite frankly, I think this is an untapped potential. I, I don't... I'm not getting the strong sense that we're doing all that we can we are not. to promote this program we and to not. get it out, except for the fact that the mayor went out door to door and started knocking. Um, the only other place that I saw this was actually on the LPD's website, where they had a little, yeah. they had a little section there for text a tip. Other than that, though, I haven't seen anything on Channel 8 or Channel 22. I haven't seen, are the kids gave, the, our younger generations are the people, it's not the seven-year-olds that are texting people, it's your 20-year-olds that are doing the texting. We are we, be, are we reaching out to the younger folks that are going to be, who have the cell phones to do the texting? We're, we're getting, we're, 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 I mean, target, we're getting responses from, you know, I think all generations. I, I completely agree with you. It has not been promoted as much as we would like. When the first program was first initiated, we did put the, we did issue a press release. We did put it up on the police department website. Um, as I say, we had the electronic bulletin boards uh, scattered around the city for a period of time, and then they were, with, with, you know, they, they stopped using the bulletin boards. So we have not publicized this as much as we want to. You know, face-to-face -face contact is the best way to do it, um, and promoting it. And with with the uh, warm weather coming eventually, um, <laughs> we are going to be doing an aggressive campaign to you know bro broaden our network, basically. Um, so I, agree, I completely agree with you. We haven't promoted it as much as we would like to. Why there was no coverage? Why there was no coverage in the local paper when we issued the press release and the like, I can't tell you. Um, but we do, we do intend, in fact, there was a, a reference to it in Rumble. Um, but we do intend to promote it a lot more because I do, I do think it's a tremendously untapped potential to reassure the citizens that we're all working together. So. Here you are. You have the microphone. What's the number for the text tip? Um, you should be using it right now to start talking about it. What's the number? If someone oh, sees okay. a crime, what are they uh, going to do? You can text 274637 or you can type in um, uh, www.lawlawpd.com and then there's a, there's a drop down thing there for text to tip. So you can, you can email it in, you can uh, use the internet to do it, or you can call the. Uh, Say it slower again. What's the, phone, what's the text number again? The text number is 274637. Six three seven. Yes, and thank I thank you, Mr. Daly. So what I'm asking tonight is just the the authorization of the council to uh, formally enter into the five year contract, even though we're paying for it in three years and under the terms of the grant. Just uh, a suggestion: uh, sure. if you can send us any information to the uh, council secretary to see whether we can put them on 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 the screen. I'd be happy to. Uh, when people are looking at. Uh, announcements and, and meetings, uh, they can also look at that information. I'd be, I'd be absolutely happy to do that. And, and um, as I say, we will be aggressively promoting it um, um, in the coming months. Councilors, any additional questions? questions? I'm all set. I'll make I have a question. Uh, Councilor um, Somebody that wants to send a picture or something, how are they protected? If they don't well, the, the, re the reason that the, this program, we, you know, we procured it under the procurement laws. The reason this is protected because it goes to an out-of-state server um, and then it's processed through an out-of-country server 
to come back in. So it's not subject to subpoena power. It's not subject to any type of discovery within the United States. Um, so it's, it's entirely anonymous. I mean, we, we can't trace it. There is a mechanism which we are, we'd like to be able to use that we can actually offer rewards through it. You know, if somebody gives a tip, you know, we, we assign a number to the communication that comes in. We establish a mechanism by which the, the reward can be, you know, paid for anonymously without anybody knowing the identity of the person. So there are, there are other things we can do with this tool for outreaching. Um, but there's, there, it can't be subpoenaed. It, it's not subject to any court jurisdiction. Um, you know, so there's complete anonymity. Because I think it's important for us to let people know that's the only way they're going to get involved. Nobody wants to be in trouble, right. especially if it's your neighbor. You don't want to tell that your neighbor is doing something wrong and then your neighbor comes back to exactly. you and know that it's you. Exactly. I have people that have complained about the police department going to their neighbor's house because they have called and their police department says that they receive a call from their neighbors saying that they have a problem or downstairs or upstairs. We don't want to see that. We want something that is going to be affected and people are getting involved. On one, of the, one of the reasons I think this program has a tremendous potential in the city is, as you, as you can see, I actually distributed this in the big packet, but um, on the text tip flyers, um, the police department is a resource, but we also have the Lawrence Youth Team as a resource too. And, and we've already had occasions where people come up and talk to our street workers to say something because they are not the police department. Um, and we can act upon it either going into a neighborhood where there's potential for trouble or there, where there's been trouble. So there's, there's two mechanisms. So if somebody doesn't want to deal with the police department at all, they don't have to. Um, okay, but I think it's important for people to know that. I agree. Like it's not, they're not going to ask you if they want it, like how am I, I going to be protected? They want to know in advance. I, I agree. We have to promote that in advance. I agree. Completely. Councilors, any additional questions? Councilors, what's your pledge? Motion to, to send that up with a favorable recommendation. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 You guys have it. Thanks for, thank you very much. Councilors, are there any additional items um, on their table matters that you would like to take off the table? Make a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 aye.